I got a bunch of requests in the comments to build Robocop, and then I had a patron over on Patreon set me over the edge, so it's finally time to build them. Alex Murphy, aka Robocop. Starting with the race, you are essentially 90% robot outside of like a face and some brain and maybe some other odds and ends. So with our race, we're gonna choose a Warforged. This actually syncs up pretty darn well with Robocop for a few different reasons. One, you're essentially a robot. Two, you get the feature Sentry's Rest. So you don't really sleep anymore as much as you become kind of inactive and just recharge, which actually happens in Robocop. And building on that idea, you have the feature Constructed Resilience, giving you advantage and resistance to poison. You don't need to eat, drink, or breathe. You're immune to disease and you don't need sleep and magic can't put you to sleep. But one feature that's really notable is integrated protection. This is gonna make you super, super tanky, which we're only gonna build on even more as we go through this build. So any armor that you have proficiency with is actually integrated directly into your body, which is pretty spot on for Robocop, and you have a plus one to your armor class by default. You also get a feature called Specialized Design, which grants you one skill proficiency. So we're going to grab Intimidation, because if you saw Robocop walking towards you, I know I'd be ready to piss myself. Then when it comes to a background, you are a cop in a dystopian future of Detroit, so we're going to grab the background, City Watch. This gives us skill proficiencies in Athletics and Insight. Then when it comes to some stats, we're going to min-max it a bit and go with 15 points to do Strength, Constitution, and Intelligence. You have a computer in your brain that's going to add to your intelligence quite a bit, and we get to boost up our constitution by two points thanks to being warforged and our intelligence by one more point thanks to being warforged just kind of playing into that whole computer in your brain thing i really wanted to dump dexterity here because you're definitely not nimble you don't move around quickly you are just kind of clunky that might pose as a problem because a lot of what you do uses firearms which would rely on dexterity but I have a way around that. But first we have to sort out a starting class. And there's a class that's gonna help us more than anything, just because it gives us proficiency in so much. And that's gonna be a fighter. This gives us proficiency in strength and constitution saving throws, and it makes it so we're proficient with all armor and all weapons which we kind of needed more than anything else. Then we get proficiency in two skills and we're able to scan the area pretty well. So we want proficiency in perception and then we'll grab history just so you can start trying to work on remembering your past. Then at first level of fighter, you get two features. The first of which being a fighting style. And I was tempted to take archery because you're doing plenty of ranged attacks, but we're gonna wind up not being able to use that in pretty much any way, shape or form. So instead we're gonna boost up that armor a bit more by taking the fighting style, defense. So now we have the ability to wear armor as heavy as plate armor, which has a armor class of 18. We have a plus one to our armor class from being a Warforged, and we have another plus one from our defense fighting style, bringing us to a default armor class of 20. And that's before any shields, spells, or any other enhancements. The other feature you get from your first level in fighter is second wind. So now as a bonus action, you can regain some hit points equal to 1d10 plus your fighter level. But that's only going to be a plus one because we're multi-classing right away. And with all of the high technology that is incorporated into our body and that we utilize between jetpacks and firearms and whatever else, we're going to be multi-classing into an artificer. Artificers get magical tinkering so you can make a small and technologically advanced object, but more importantly, they get some spell casting. I'll cover most of the important spells throughout this build, but if you want the full spell list, just check out my Patreon. I'll have the full spell list and character sheets there. When it comes to cantrips, overall, there's only three worth grabbing. One is Firebolt. This is basically you recreating, being able to have some firearms that you can blast away with. Next up is mending to help repair yourself and message to send out some communications to your fellow officers. Then I would really focus on that integrated targeting system that you have and grab the spell fairy fire. This allows you to highlight some enemies and you have advantage on all of your attacks against them, which is going to be pretty darn helpful just in case somebody's using a human shield and you feel like shooting them in the dick. Then at second level of artificer, you get infuse item. Now you can create some very advanced magical items and this is really going to help with our overall build. The first few I would grab are one, enhanced arcane focus. So now when you have to make a spell attack roll with an arcane focus, which in this case we're going to assume that that's kind of the gun that you take out of your own thigh, but you can enhance that with a plus one to your spell attack modifier. And if you reach 10th level in this class, that plus one jumps up to a plus two. The next infusion I would learn is enhanced defense. So now you can actually boost up your 
armor class by another plus one. And that is also boosted up again to plus two once you hit 10th level in Artificer. Then you do have some pretty good strength, but it doesn't show up in your ability scores. So we're gonna take the armor of magical strength, allowing you to add your intelligence modifier to a strength check, but you can only do it a certain number of charges. Then the last one I kind of want to grab is Repulsor Shield. It allows you to enchant a shield with a plus one, and then if somebody tries to attack you, you can knock them back. Full-blown 80s style, like you're throwing them through a wall or something. Then at third level of Artificer, you get right tool for the job, so you can just kind of manifest tools that you need in certain situations, and you get to choose an Artificer Specialist, which is essentially just your Artificer subclass. And I want to focus more on the blaster thing you have in your thigh that is just very iconic to the Robocop character. So we're going to take the subclass, Artillerist. This automatically grants us the spell Shield, and it also grants you Thunder Wave. But more importantly, it grants you an Eldritch Cannon. This cannon can be a large enough thing to set up like a turret, but it can also be tiny enough that you can hold it in a hand. You can use it to help protect yourself with the protector version, granting some temporary hit points equal to 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier. You can also turn it into a flamethrower to spew out flames in a cone, dealing 2d8 fire damage, or what I would assume you would use it for the most, Force Ballista, allowing you to make a ranged spell attack. On a hit, it will deal 2d8 force damage and push a target five feet away, literally blasting them away. And it should be noted that this is all done with a bonus action, meaning that you can shoot a firebolt as your action and a bonus bonus action to blow them away with your force ballista. Then at fourth level of artificer, you get an ability score improvement. So we're just going to boost up our intelligence by two points because that's going to help pretty much everything artificer related. Then at fifth level of artificer, we get access to second level spell slots. Thanks to being an artillerist, we get the spells Scorching Ray and Shatter, which just feels like more blasty stuff you can pull off. But you also get another feature from being an artillerist called Arcane Firearm allowing you to enchant whatever arcane focus you have and use that as your firearm, which can boost your damage by 1d8 whenever you're doing any damaging spell with it, which is really gonna help that basic firebolt cantrip or any of the actual leveled spells you wanna use with it too. Then at sixth level of artificer, you get tool expertise. So now your proficiency bonus is doubled when you use any tools that you're proficient with, you know, just in case you need to put yourself back together at some point. But you also get to learn a few more infusions. And I wanna focus on how you can kind of target people People inside of your helmet. So we're going to pick up the infusion, Helm of Awareness. This makes it so you can't be surprised and you have advantage on your initiative rolls. Then just to boost up your spell casting a bit, I'm going to grab the Spell Refueling Ring, allowing you to regain one spell slot as an action, but it can only be a spell slot of level three or lower. Then at seventh level of Artificer, you get Flash of Genius. So when you or anybody within 30 feet of you has to make an ability check or saving throw, you can go ahead and use your reaction to add your intelligence modifier to that roll. Then at 8th level of Artificer, you get another ability score improvement. So let's go ahead and max out that intelligence. Then at ninth level of Artificer, you get access to 3rd level spells. So we automatically get a couple really good ones from being an artillerist. Most notably, Fireball. And it wouldn't be a good 80s movie if it wasn't for some big explosions. But there's one other one I can't go without mentioning, and it's because you get a jetpack within the Robocop movies. So we're going to pick up the spell fly. Also at ninth level, you get another feature from being an artillerist called explosive cannon. So now any of the damaging rolls you deal with your Eldritch cannon is boosted by another 1d8. And as an action, you can command your cannon to explode, dealing 3d8 damage in an area of effect. Then at 10th level of Artificer, you do get some upgrades to your infusions, and you can actually attune to more items than any other character in D&D, because you get the feature magic item adept. So while everybody else is stuck only being able to attune to three items, you can now attune to up to four items. Not to mention you can make magic items a little faster, which can be pretty helpful, especially since now you can learn a few more infusions. So the two I would focus on here are gonna be the winged boots. You already have the spell fly, but I really like the idea of having an actual item like the jetpack in order to allow you to fly. Also, there are a few times where somebody's trying to kind of get into your mind and distract you. So I'm gonna grab the infusion mind sharpener. This is specifically described as sending a jolt to your brain when you're trying to concentrate on a spell and it just allows you to retry a constitution saving throw to concentrate on a spell. Then at 11th level of artificer, you get a spell storing item, allowing you to store a first or second level 
level artificer spell in some sort of item. And that spell can be used a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier. Then at 12th level of artificer, you get another ability score improvement. So let's go ahead and round out our constitution and strength because those odd scores aren't helping anybody. Then at 13th level of artificer, you get access to fourth level spells. You're automatically granted ice storm and wall of fire, which wall of fire might be able to play into the explosions and 80s movies, but I'm not so sure about ice storm. Additionally, I would grab arcane eye to help scout out areas a little better and fabricate just because I like to break in-game economies. Then at 14th level of artificer, you get magic item savant. So now you can attune to up to five magic items and you get to ignore all race and class and all sorts of requirements when attuning to item. Also at this level, you get to learn a couple more infusions. And just in case you don't have insane enough armor class as it is, I would grab the ring of protection, boosting your armor class by one more point. You're pretty much impossible to hit at this point. And just in case there's a bit more elemental damage coming at you, I would go ahead and grab the infusion resistant armor. So now you can become resistant to certain types of elemental damage, but not just elemental. It can actually also be psychic and radiant and basically any type of magical damage that could possibly hit you. Then at 15th level of Artificer, you get another feature from being an artillerist called Fortified Position. So anybody within 10 feet of your cannon, and remember, you're probably going to be holding it, so it's just surrounding you all the time, is immediately granted half cover, giving you a plus two bonus to dexterity saving throws and your armor class, just in case your armor class wasn't already high enough. And you can actually have two cannons at the same time now, and you can use one bonus action to activate both of them. So now you can do a bit more rapid fire. Then at 16th level of Artificer, you get another ability score improvement, so let's just go ahead and boost up our constitution by two more points. Then at 17th level of Artificer, you get access to 5th level spells. And just in case you need a bit more protection, like hiding behind a car or getting some sort of barricades in front of you, I would just grab Wall of Force. If you use this spell properly, it can be kind of game-breaking. Then at 18th level of Artificer, you can actually attune to up to six magic items, which can be insanely game-breaking because everybody else can only attune to three. And you can even infuse more items at this level as well. And to help with that sort of technological eye-tracking stuff that you have, I would replicate the item Gem of Seeing, so you have basically true sight, and you're a cop. So I'm gonna replicate the item dimensional shackles because being a cop you need some handcuffs then at 19th level of artificer you get your last ability score improvement so let's go ahead and grab a feat because we have pretty much max stats and everything we would want so we're going to grab the feat tough this allows us to boost our hit points by two points per level of this overall build that brings us to 20th level overall and hopefully I did RoboCop justice. If there's anything you do differently, let me know in the comments down below. And if you like D&D related content, make sure to subscribe because apparently that makes it so you roll more nat 20s in your next D&D sessions. But if you want the character sheet for this build or any of my other builds, including the full spell list and everything, I include the PDFs and the D&D Beyond links up on my Patreon which is linked in the description down below, where you can be just as awesome as some of these people scrolling on by and they help support this channel. They're all super awesome, but I do have some extra awesome player character patrons. That Funny Man 57, Ted Z, Dennis Bumgardner, Natron 209, Kevin Shirley, Zephros, Joshua Maynard, CGC 2014, Elisa Martinez, Panda Milkshake, Andrew Nobles, Carcat Kitsune, Decker Joint, Z13, Viral Nervar, Daniel Galvin, and the Dino 21. Then going above and beyond that are my Dungeon Master level patrons I play D&D with. T. Brownie, Julia B. De Oliveira, Shane Gilroy, Daniel Saffler, Common ZX, Cyrus Society, Salvador, Devin Happy, and Kilo Kilo. Then going above and beyond, anything I ever imagined is my god tier level patron, Gamestake. He really contributes so much to this channel. So a very special thank you to him. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button. Especially if you want to play as a former policeman who becomes a robot policeman and takes on the dystopian future of Detroit as Robocop in Dungeons and Dragons.